I try to make something that I've never seen. I appreciate traditional quilting and I respect it. And I love that people are still quilting and keeping that tradition alive. But I don't always want to see the same quilts, the same patterns that have been used before. Since I don't just use one color mosaics, I'm trying to make a light area, but with lots of color. Sometimes I get it, something emerges, and I know there was a line, but now I see that line echoes this line in almost the same color. So if I, that line will have something to do with that line as I go. I have to fuse sometimes before I forget, or if I pick up the whole thing, the pieces I forgot about fall off. Sometimes I find just the right one. Which one was the right one? This purple one. See, I want to repeat the purple. I don't want it to just stop all of a sudden. So I thought, oh, what I do is throw in a couple more purples before I fade out of this dark color. And then I found just the right one. I think the only thing that's not working is I think some of these tones are too dark. And something about this area I don't like. I think I need another dark line coming here. Dark line like this. And I make it a priority, and that's the only way I can get it done. I learned when my children were small to work with uh, one hour blocks of time, one and a half, two hours. I know in my mind I have X amount of time, so even if I'm not going to make the most perfect thing, if I really want to make something, I'll just make it. And I think that's one thing that helps me. I don't have a lot of time to think about things and plan. And I used to think that was a weakness, but it's fun. It's fun for me. As long as it's fun for me, that's the important thing. I love sewing. I know some people, for some people, it's stressful. But for me, it's um, relaxing and just gives me a little getaway. I get to play with my colors, especially in the winter. I love quilting with the bright colors when it's kind of dreary outside. I've been working on this series of figurative pieces where there's a very complex structure of the piecing and the applique and sort of building up different lines, parallel lines in both of those layers. So they seem to have a very complex abstract quality to them and there's also a figurative composition that's kind of hidden in the piece. And I've been looking at different kinds of paintings as inspiration for those compositions. I've been attracted to a lot of those Northern Renaissance painters because the textiles are so rich in the, in the paintings and the way that the folds and the patterns and uh, all those things are handled in the painting. So I'm kind of putting those fabrics back into a, a cloth composition. I do a lot of designing on the computer and I can use a, a computer program to cut and paste layers and kind of do applique on the computer and get a really good idea of how things are going to layer up. So this is the bottom layer of the piece, the piece layer, and then Here's that applique layer on there. I'll turn off the piece layer so you can see them separately. And I love just seeing if it's really going to work. What I have planned, you know, I can mock it up on the computer, but I don't see everything on the computer. There's still decisions that are made as I'm working out the piece. Just finding out if it's really going to work, and that can be really satisfying or challenging either way. Well, I've been a textile artist for quite a long time. And for a long time, I really resisted the idea of making a quilt. Um, there's something kind of homespun about that term. And, you know, when things got close to being a quilt, I sort of changed and, and went in another way. I wanted my work not to be so easily classified. And actually, when I first started this series, I didn't think about them as quilts. They were, they were layered pieces that I, you know, built up and then I, you know, just decided that I, you know, that I could do that, that I, I could call it a quilt, it would be okay.